With the release of Microsoft's $20 a month Copilot Pro a couple of weeks ago, I made a video focusing in on how Copilot Pro stacks up against Copilot for Microsoft 365. If that's what you're interested in, there's a link to that video down below. But given the target audience of this new license, individuals rather than businesses, there's another service it's probably even more logical to compare it to. That's ChatGPT+. Both Copilot Pro and ChatGPT give access to OpenAI's latest models, versions of GPT-4. They both have multimodal capabilities, being able to work with both text and images. They both have access to the web for up to the minute grounding data, and they both cost $20 a month. So in this video, I'm going to dig into how these services are similar, how they are different, and we'll try to work out whether one or other should be best for your needs. Or maybe you just need both. Before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I help businesses and their leaders around the world get more from technology. And you can find out more information about me and my company's services down in the video description. Over the course of the last year or so, ChatGPT Plus was really my go-to AI tool. But all that changed when I got access to Copilot for Microsoft 365. ChatGPT Plus is aimed at individual users and costs $20 a month. It upgrades the free ChatGPT access by giving you the ability to use ChatGPT with OpenAI's most modern GPT-4 model, rather than just GPT-3.5, and other enhancements such as image creation with DALI, web browsing, advanced data analysis, and creating and using GPTs. Copilot Pro, which has now been available for a few weeks, enhances the free Copilot experience by adding priority access to GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo, giving you more flexible access to DALI image creation, along with boosts to get faster image generation. Eventually, Copilot Pro will give you the ability to create GPTs as you can with ChatGPT+, but that functionality is not available yet, and there's a limited number of GPTs available at this time. It's important to point out that as written at least, the free Copilot tier gives you far more than the free ChatGPT tier. It provides GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo access, except in peak times. It allows you to create images with limits, and it even provides the use of plugins and GPTs, although you will need Copilot Pro to create those GPTs once that feature is released. The big step up you get in Copilot Pro versus free is a consumer version of Copilot in Microsoft's Office apps. Though you do need a separate paid Microsoft 365 personal or family subscription to take advantage of this. And it is a somewhat watered down experience versus Microsoft's flagship Copilot for Microsoft 365. I reviewed these differences in the video I mentioned earlier, so I won't go over them again here. But suffice to say, because of this big difference, the value proposition of $20 per month on Copilot Pro versus ChatGPT Plus is difficult to compare on paper. The question for this video though, is if we simply put these two tools side by side as AI chat assistants, are their capabilities, quality and speed similar? The methodology for these tests is simple. I'm going to use the same four prompts for both services that aim to test its text generation and ability to access recent web results, image understanding and image generation. I'm going to put the two services next to one another and rate them both subjectively on the quality of responses and objectively on the speed or other characteristics that make sense. Although ChatGPT Plus can analyze and create files outside of images, Copilot Pro without its integration into the Office apps cannot. So I'm not going to test that specific capability here. In both cases, I'm going to use the best available model. So for ChatGPT, I'm selecting ChatGPT4, and for Copilot Pro, I'm selecting the creative mode with GPT4 Turbo turned on. In ChatGPT, I don't have any custom instructions enabled, and in Copilot Pro, personalization is turned off. As always, the demo screens you'll see in this video are in a protected demo environment, and you never see anyone's private information. So first let's start with image recognition. I have a photo of Tower Bridge in London that was uploaded to Pixabay by photographer Luca. There's a link to his work below. I'm prompted both services, tell me about the objects in this photo, give me a historical perspective on them and some web links for further reading. 
Interestingly, both of these responses are generated in almost exactly the same amount of time. We know we selected for Copilot Pro to use GPT-4 Turbo, and this should be OpenAI's fastest model. But to my knowledge, ChatGPT Plus users are still restricted to GPT-4, with GPT-4 Turbo reserved for API access. So I was expecting ChatGPT to be noticeably slower, but in this case, its response seems a little more robust in about the same amount of time. If we exclude the ads being served by Copilot, not so helpful, and the map, more helpful. The two responses are largely similar. ChatGPT's is more expansive, but Copilot's is a little more accessible being broken down into bullet points. I also like the fact that it gives some prompting on what value you would get from the further reading materials rather than just presenting each of its links. That said, Copilot does seem to be relying upon a broader range of sources than ChatGPT. Which is better? On the core task of recognising what was in the photo and providing information, both did a fine job. Which you prefer would largely be a personal opinion. For me, I probably like ChatGPT's approach a little better overall. Second, I'm going to prompt, write a summary of the three most important technology innovations of 2024 so far, break it down into sections, cite web sources published since the start of this year. This is testing the ability of both tools to use the web to get up-to-date information and make sense of it. Bear in mind that GPT-4's dataset only takes us up to mid-2023, so on anything later than that, the ability these tools have to search the web is key. On this, Copilot is lightning fast compared to ChatGPT, taking a little less than half the time to complete its response. And while the specific technologies each of them listed were different, the way they approached this request in terms of the layout and detail of the response they gave was actually strikingly similar. Both took advances in AI as their first item, but deviated on the other two. They did both provide web links related to the information they were sharing. However, on reviewing the linked web pages, Copilot did provide one that was outside the timeframe I specified, and both leaned on an MIT published page that I couldn't find a publication date for. While all the content was related to my inquiry, I did specify that web sources should be published since the start of the year, and such time-locked requests are fairly trivial to do with a search engine. Which gives the better response? Well, Copilot had an obvious deviation from my request, so it clearly loses here if I fully apply those rules. However, both demonstrated they can easily build responses using recent web results and structure that information in a sensible manner. If you're looking for speed, Copilot definitely won on that measure here. I was interested by the fact that one of the source articles ChatGPT cited wasn't in English. We know that ChatGPT is a really strong translation machine, but I hadn't considered the fact that it doesn't really care what language the information it finds is in. This could lead to some interesting use cases, and it isn't something I've seen on Copilot, so I wonder if there Microsoft filters the Bing results differently. I guess there are pros and cons to this approach, as if you wanted to use the linked articles, this does create an extra step. If you're enjoying this video, please do hit the like button to help me get in front of more interested people. And if you're not yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button too. Thanks. Third, I want to test image generation. I had ChatGPT suggest a prompt to use. Create a photorealistic image of a serene domestic scene featuring a fluffy orange tabby cat and a gentle golden retriever dog sleeping snugly together on a cosy plush couch. The couch is situated in a warmly lit living room with soft sunlight filtering through sheer curtains, casting a tranquil glow over the peaceful companions. The room's decor is minimalist yet inviting, with a few houseplants in the background adding a touch of greenery. The overall mood of the image should evoke a sense of calm and companionship. Copilot beats ChatGPT on speed by a fraction here, but its output is more impressive as it presents four options, whereas ChatGPT presents only one. I know this number of options has changed around a lot in recent months in ChatGPT, and while we see the landscape orientation by default in Copilot, you can get ChatGPT to create these differently shaped images if you request it. Are they any good? I mean, I think all of them are fine. Would I consider any of them truly photorealistic? No, 
Does it meet the overall objective of the prompt? Yes, but does it have all the detail in there in every image? No, I don't think so. I think Copilot does have to edge out ChatGPT here though, as it is quicker by a hair, or I guess in the case of these images, maybe a whisker, and it provides the four options, whereas ChatGPT only provides one. Last, I want to test them on creating some longer form text creatively, using an idea my toddler came up with when I was putting him to bed last night. I'm going to prompt, create a 500 word short story about a toddler who discovers he can climb up walls like a spider. Copilot Pro is significantly quicker than ChatGPT at this task. It delivers 488 words while ChatGPT delivers 552. So both are within an acceptable margin of what was asked for in the prompt. Ranking them side by side is entirely subjective, but to me the Copilot story feels more like it was written by AI. It uses more colourful vocabulary and in a way that feels like a precocious child trying to show off rather than an experienced author. The ChatGPT story also flows a little better and seems to make a little more sense. Is this a difference between GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo, or maybe something different in OpenAI's system prompt versus Microsoft's? It's impossible to know, but I have generally found through extended use that Copilot tends to have less satisfactory writing output than ChatGPT, particularly on this longer form stuff. One interesting thing we should consider is for many Copilot Pro users, the main reason for upgrading won't necessarily be the quicker access to the Copilot chat service, but to the AI integration into the Office apps offers as part of a separate Microsoft 365 personal or family plan. In that case, the place where you might most commonly be doing text generation tasks like this isn't the Copilot website, but in Microsoft Word. So what does this look like in Word? The reality is that generating this response in Word leads to a less satisfactory output in my view than either of the two web-based options. It actually takes longer to get this output than Copilot takes on the web, and it's a shorter response and less logically a short story. It has a chapter heading and doesn't actually finish. I would say of the three options shown here, it's the weakest response overall. So with the testing over, which should you buy? On most tests, Copilot Pro appears to be quicker than ChatGPT, in some cases by a small amount, in others by a more significant margin. My assumption is this is down to using different models, as if we compared Copilot with GPT-4 to ChatGPT with GPT-4, they would probably be more similar. But what's the point of paying your $20 and opting for slower? There didn't seem much point in doing that comparison. In substance, there isn't a huge difference between them. There are subjective differences in outputs. You might like the different way Copilot offers up generated images. I personally tend to prefer the way ChatGPT deals with longer form text. You also don't get ads bombarding you in ChatGPT, but you most certainly do, as you saw in Copilot, even after you've paid the $20 to upgrade to the Pro tier. ChatGPT has more options through its GPT store than Copilot has for GPTs or plugins yet, but with the upcoming addition of a tool to build your own GPTs, this might change. We should also remember that one of the big differences between GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo is a between four times and 16 times context window expansion, which means that notionally right now, you should be able to have better ongoing discussions, including more context with Copilot Pro than you can with ChatGPT. The reality is though, that for most moderate users, the most impactful upgrade between Copilot and Copilot Pro will be the inclusion of Copilot into the apps that are part of a separate Microsoft 365 personal or family plan. This is something for which ChatGPT Plus doesn't have an equivalent set of features and is what sets Copilot Pro apart from competitor products, albeit for a modest increase above that quoted $20 a month price if you have to buy a Microsoft 365 license too. For that reason, the example I showed you in Word was interesting, as in my use of Copilot for Microsoft 365, most of my text generation in Word has been leveraging other files within my tenant for context something I cannot do using just Copilot, and so I have found the outputs in Word acceptable and useful. However, without that feature in Copilot Pro, for text generation at least, perhaps the options in Copilot through the web are better. 
Remember though that Copilot isn't just about Word and there definitely aren't Copilot features like you'll find in PowerPoint or Excel or even Outlook in the Copilot web interface. However, while OpenAI doesn't have a productivity suite, it does have the ability for you to input files and even create files from its ChatGPT web interface. If you're not too worried about PowerPoint slide decks or needing help making Excel spreadsheets, then in some ways with this feature, you have a step up in ChatGPT Plus versus Copilot Pro, even if you are licensed for Word. We should also remember that there are important licensing in the case of Copilot Pro and data protection in the case of both Copilot Pro and ChatGPT Plus considerations that you should take into account before sharing any proprietary or confidential data with either service. Details of all of this are in my initial Copilot Pro video linked below. So which do I choose? Right now both. In fact, all three. ChatGPT Plus, Copilot Pro and Copilot for Microsoft 365. For most normal people though, if you're in the personal category of usage that is the market for both Copilot Pro and ChatGPT Plus, then I think in many ways ChatGPT Plus makes more sense than Copilot Pro. If you just want Copilot Pro because of the integration with Microsoft 365, then I just don't think without the ability to reference other files that right now you'll be getting the best out of the product in most cases. I mean, it does depend on your need, but if you need that file referencing or it would be useful to you, I know it'll be more expensive, but the best experience is for you to buy a supported Microsoft 365 business license and co-pilot for Microsoft 365, which at a minimum will cost you an extra $200 a year per user versus a co-pilot pro and Microsoft 365 personal subscription. What do you think? Which have you bought or which are you going to try? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.